Hello and welcome to another episode of Margin Called, the only channel on YouTube dedicated to controlling your losses in the stock market. In today's video, as you probably noticed by the thumbnail, I did take a loss today. I didn't just take a loss, I also wiped out any gains that I made the day prior. I'll explain to you why that happened in a moment, but first, I want to show you what I saw today before the market open on the one hour chart of SPY. I'm not sure if I elaborated on this in a previous video, but uh, I'd say about the past week or so ago, I've been increasingly bearish on the stock market, looking at uh, QQQ, SPY, VanEck Semiconductors. Um, I'm seeing a lot of price action patterns, which are uh, at the time were suggesting a reversal. Uh, for SPY, for instance, as we can see here, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have one uh, high uh, that was printed, it looks like, uh, in the middle of June. We have this second high looking like a uh, double top, essentially, at the end of the month of June. But uh, when we look over the past couple of days of price action, we can see here this white line, which is the 100 exponential moving average, appears to have served as a base of support. Uh, not only that, we have a little bit of a double uh, bottom pattern forming here. And if this uh, pattern is what I think it could be, we could actually see the SPY go to as high as 450. I would assume it would make that move uh, at before the end of this week. So, uh, without further ado, I will say that looking at the charts today, my general attitude was bullish. So I was looking to get into some type of a long position. The only problem is, is that uh, the only real good opportunity to get in was right around here. It looks like uh, 20 of noon. I'll uh, go down to a lower time frame. We're looking at a 10 minute time frame now. But this was really the only good opportunity to make a long trade, in my opinion, today if you were using options. I had three separate trades, and uh, just to remind you, here was my uh, losses for the day. Now initially, when I was looking at this gap up, this is uh, today's price action, July 11th, uh, I saw that we were getting above the 200 EMA. Uh, this is a 200 EMA, that's the uh, yellow line I've got here. And of course, if you haven't already seen, this is my alligator indicator, which is supposed to indicate when a market is bullish or bearish based on that fan look that you can see there with the, uh, the lips, the teeth, and the jaw or whatever. But um, I saw this gap up, and I saw this retracement, a pretty sharp retracement, back down to the 200 EMA. And if you look at this uh, candlestick right here, it looks like we basically just filled that gap from the previous day close, uh, which was a pretty sharp um, buying candle, I might add. So I'm thinking to myself, wow, this market really could, uh, you know, it's filling the downside gap. If that can hold, if that price action can hold there, I really think that this could really make another uh, move to the upside, especially before uh, CPI data is released tomorrow. So I basically spent this part of the morning looking for uh, ideal entries to get into this market, unfortunately, because, <clears throat> again, excuse me, because of the contracts that I was buying, I was buying uh, contracts uh, with expirations to July 12th, uh, which were, have, I guess, built-in volatility which was making the pricing on them super duper expensive. And just because of the pricey, ch uh, the, the uh, I guess you could say pricey chop uh, or <laughs> choppy price action. Wow, I've got Tourette's today. Um, it was making it very, very difficult to either hold positions, get quality entries. Um, and as you can see here, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but um, we did have a nice uh, breakdown here initially what my what my hypothesis was was this nine ema this is on a five minute time frame this nine ema was going to hold uh, for the spy and it would bounce up from here 
So I actually, if you can believe it, I actually entered a long position on this candle. And as you can see, the immediate next candle on that five minute time frame was just a real sharp downward move. So I said to myself, I've got to get out of this. Uh, this isn't working for me. Um, I decided to sit back, wait a little bit more. Um, and uh, once I saw that we had at least established a bottom here, and if I can jump back to my 10 minute time frame, it's right around this point in the morning where we were really kind of like hammering down that bottom. And I was really happy with the fact that on my alligator indicator, um, this green line, the uh, I guess it would be the lips of this alligator indicator, uh, that seemed to be some point of um, support. Furthermore, um, let me see if I can actually do this again. Um, not even sure if it's worth it. But I'm just curious to see where that price action, if that coincides, not quite, but it's still at that Fibonacci uh, 439, 440 zone uh, that I was kind of talking about in the previous video from yesterday. So at least it took a little while, but it did eventually find support there. And, um, oops, uh, I did get into a long position at that point. But the problem is, is that I got very bad pricing on the uh, the contracts that I was getting into. And as you can see, it wasn't really a good, strong move to the upside. If I had waited a little bit longer, and uh, if I actually was not busy around that uh, 1130 noon period, this could have been a very, very nice trade. Uh, we had a basically a retest, excuse me, a retest of VWAP at this level. And from there, it made a pretty sharp bounce to the upside. Uh, I'm not really sure um, how you would determine what would be the best point to, uh, to get out of this trade. Obviously, if it's a scalp, any sort of profits, you want to just lock those in. Uh, but unfortunately, I mean, if you can, as you can see, if you were in options for that trade and if you held too long, you probably would have lost everything and then some. Uh, of course, unless you had some real uh, stones, and if you held into the end of the day, you could have made uh, at least break even, if not more than that. And of course, it was like uh, probably yeah two hours uh, or so, maybe an hour and a half before the close, where we had this really, really sharp move to the upside. So clearly, I guess the market is, uh, in general, just jittery with all of the, uh, I guess, speculation about the CPI data, what that's going to mean for further interest rate hikes, if it's going to be um, a slower process, or if it's going to be, you know, inflation being the priority. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to make sure I got that quick video out there. Um, please like the video if you uh, find this content to be informative and educational. Of course, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I guess there's a little notification bell for any sort of new videos that I upload. Just a reminder, I'm probably not going to be able to upload anything tomorrow. I'm going to be traveling for business. Uh, and thankfully, I will not be placing any trades uh, given the uh, CPI circumstances. That's probably a blessing in describe uh, a blessing in disguise, if I don't say so myself. But anyway, um, I think that'll wrap it up for today. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. And uh, remember, whatever you do, don't get margin called.